What's up scuba homies? Today we're gonna to be checking out another dive video. If you wanna know my approach to these videos, I kinda of already explained it in the last one, so check that out right up there. Uh, but in a new tab, you'll watch this one first. You'll watch that one next. Or you can watch that one and then watch this one. Either way, I'm not the boss of you. Do whatever you want. This one honestly kinda of rustled my jimmies, so stay tuned to find out why. All right, let's get started. A um, little backstory first. From what I can tell, this took place on a drift dive in Playa del Carmen. It was a dive led by a guide on a charter and it was about 60 feet deep. And that's about all I know. Let's check it out. A dangerous turtle, a fascination with big consequences. Please turn your sound on. Cool. Turtle. While drift diving, we notice a turtle. Alright, so for those of you that don't know what drift diving is, if you've never done drift diving before, uh, I won't get too into it because it's like right there in the name. But basically, the boat drops you off one place and then they pick you up in another place and you ride the current. And it is fantastic. Very fun. Love it. All right, so they're drift diving. They found a turtle, so now everybody's turned around and they're going to be working extremely hard to fight against the current. So the only thing that kind of sucks about drift diving is if you want to take a picture of something, you really got to work for it or just stop caring about taking pictures of things. All right, so they're swimming really hard. I see one set of split fins. I know that guy's swimming hard. I struggle against the strong current. A strong current. Oh, shit. making a lot of headway. Alright, this person's just planted themselves on the bottom and they're holding on to something. I don't want to know who they're- <laughs> Okay, so first of all, where I am, that's illegal. And I thought that it was illegal there, too. I know there's a- it's a marine park in Cozumel. I don't know if it extends over to Playa del Carmen, but don't touch anything underwater. Seriously. Just don't. You have no idea- how you could be affecting it adversely. Don't touch anything, especially not turtles. This poor thing's just trying to chill and eat some limo or whatever. Who's this person? Everybody's got, oh, we're all touching it now. I'm holding on to the coral and I'm touching the turtle. Ain't it great to be on vacation? Get your hands up there. You can't even get this close to them in Hawaii, legally. Everybody does it. Fascinated, I forget to check my air gauge. Okay, let's unpack that. So, your air gauge, when I'm trying to impress upon someone in a course or on the boat that it's really important that you check your air gauge, I tell them this is kind of like your stopwatch for how long you live. It's literally a gauge that shows how long you're going to survive underwater. So you want to keep your eye on it. Make sure you're checking it at least every five minutes, right? Some people get complacent and you don't check your air and then all of a sudden there's a problem and you have less air than you thought you did. So we'll watch and we'll see what happens with this guy not checking his gauge. Sweating because they're touching that turtle. It's making me so mad. Hi, turtle. I also think that this is filmed with a GoPro HD Hero 1 because of the horrible focus underwater. Before they came out with flat lens housing, housings for those cameras, they all had terrible focus. The current carries the group away. That looked pretty close. Then again, it's on a GoPro. They make everything look further or closer. Further? Whatever. Oh no! <laughs> Did you hear that? I realize I have very little air left. Oh. Oh. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Very little air left. Oh. <laughs> ah! There it is! There's the problem. Split fins. He's got split fins. <laughs> That's his problem. The, um... Split fins are not good, folks. It's like a fin that they ship to you already broken. 
Don't buy split fins. Uh, I use the camera to make noise. No one hears me. So he's banging on his tank with his camera. Not the most efficient thing to bang on your tank with. I get it. It's life or death, and it's all he's got. Um, at this point, I mean, when I'm diving, I'm really listening when I'm guiding. So this kind of... Uh, I don't. Th he doesn't get the dive guide's attention, which is <clears throat> troubling to me, especially on a drift dive. Uh, when I'm doing a drift dive, there's a few things I want to consider. One is making sure at the end of the dive I can ascend and everyone uh, or in the boats will know where I am. So I like to carry. I have it here. My surface marker buoy, which we'll touch on again later, so I can send that up ahead of me. The other thing is I'm going to be checking on my divers more and more frequently on a drift dive because I need to know where they are. We have to all stay together. Otherwise, there's going to be problems. Okay, so nobody's hearing him. He's back on his tank with the camera, which I love. Doesn't just sit there and let it happen. And now he's got a choice to make. Let's see what he does. Sorry, it's a little hot. Oh, he's making an emergency ascent. Not quite a CISA. Just making an ascent. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't realize this. When you're doing your CISA, your instructor tells you to keep your air in your your regulator in your mouth if you're doing a paddy course. That's because uh, sometimes you can have residual pressure that wasn't enough for you to get, but as you ascend, you it builds up. Not pressure, but it uh, you actually get a little bit of a breath on your way up. I have it personally had to do a real CISA, but talking to the people that I know that have, that's been the case. They got said they got a, an extra breath or two on the way up. All right. So we can see the color in the water changing, so we're getting shallow. Looks like we're at the surface. Okay, slow-mo. This is for a dramatic effect. He's on the surface, alive. Thank God. Um, wow. Okay. 500 meters from shore. You can swim that. Maybe not in that current. <laughs> I see a boat in the distance. Hurrah! Safety. Oh. oh. <laughs> Macro shot. I removed my mask and put it around my neck to show that I'm okay. So we've all heard that in scuba classes, probably. Maybe some of you didn't. But, uh, you know, if you put your mask on your forehead, that means you're a diver in distress. Or it just means that you're a diver that wants to put their mask on their forehead. Uh, I personally, just to avoid anybody talking to me about it, I twist it around back. They say that if you're in surf, your mask could get knocked off your head if it's on your forehead. That's true. So don't put it on your forehead when you're in surf. But if you're not in surf... Sorry, I'm just not that hardcore. It's those split fins, man. That caused the whole problem. Where are you going? Swimming to shore? So this video is only five minutes long or something, but in the description, I think it said that he waited on the surface for about 10 minutes. Uh, longest I've ever waited on a surface to get picked up was uh, because of a mistake. And we, uh, <laughs> this guy with the banging on the tanks. We just say it's, it's, it's not fun to wait on the surface all by yourself. Oh, oh, time warp. Okay. So we're not in the future. Hey, oh. trying to signal it's at this point that you start wishing that you'd invested more in surface signaling devices the boat doesn't hear me either that's not a regret you want to make make sure you carry some kind of surface signaling device on your <laughs> these fins i'm telling you man one of his fins slips off but he, he caught it it's okay He waves his fin. How genius! If only 
someone could have foreseen the need to signal someone at the surface and come up with a device so you wouldn't have to take off your fin and wave to the boat. Oh, wait. It's called a DSMB. And this is Drift Diving 101. Or really, any type of diving. You should just have one of these. If you're maybe not cave diving, I'll let you uh, think about it for yourself why they might not be a good idea in caves. But, so... It rolls up neatly, and then it unrolls to be this big, long thing. It's got a couple of ways to inflate it. You can fill it up with air from purging a regulator into the bottom. You can actually attach your BCD inflator to this if you disconnect the hose and stick it in there. Or use a stage bottle or a bailout or something like that. Uh, or you can just blow into it, which is what I typically do, just to keep things easy. Um, but you just push this down and blow into it. <sighs> And I do recommend the largest one that you're willing to carry because you will be very happy that you are able to signal if you ever need one of these. All right? DSMB, Delayed Service Marker Buoy. You can get a spool for it and you can send it up ahead of yourself and that way boats won't hit you. In fact, usually I draw something on here that says, like, don't run me over or something just for fun. All right. <laughs> okay. The boat is here. Let's see what happens to our friend. Also... Uh, that guy was banging on his tank trying to get the dive guide's attention from the surface. It looked like they never noticed. That's not good. That that was uh, should have been checking on their divers very frequently. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Oh, well. At least the guy is alive. A boat arrives. Problemo. He's got a problemo. I got a problemo uh, I with the way know. this whole Mickey Mouse operation is run. I yell problemo. The guy asks me, where's my boat? I say that I don't... Of course he doesn't know where his boat is. Tell him the name of your boat. Actually, always know the name of the boat you're on for this exact reason. Because if you, you know, book your dive online through some third party and you get to the place you don't even know the name of the shop and you're out in the middle of the ocean <laughs> some other boat picks you up, they're like, so, uh, who should we radio? And you're like, I don't know. You seem a little foolish when that happens. Not to... You know, I'll be nice. I'll be nice. I've been being real mean. I'm sorry. Alright, so they finally get him to his boat. Oh, it's his daughter. Yay. She's happy. My daughter Anna is very happy. He's back safe and sound. Alright. Well. Truly a harrowing experience. To be sure. Well, let's unpack that. So, some things that went bad. Well, you know what? Let's go with what went well first. He competently made an emergency ascent and stayed calm at the surface and did the best he could with what he had to uh, attempt to be rescued by waving his fin. That's better than nothing, I guess. Not so bad. It's a good reason to have brightly colored fins, I guess. Never really thought about it that way because uh, I carry an SMB. But let's talk about what didn't go so hot. So too far away from the group. Uh, how far away f should you be from your buddy? Your buddy should be arm's length away from you. You want to think about this. How far do you want your buddy away from you when you realize that you're completely out of air? Okay. You need to make sure that they're close enough that you can basically lean over and tap them and get their attention because uh, usually, when you run out of air, you, it's not like an opportune time. It's the worst time possible. Uh, drift diving. The guy didn't launch an SMB. Probably didn't even know that he should have. Probably didn't even think about it. But these are things that you need to know if you're going to be drift diving. Should be briefed. I've been to Cozumel. I know for a fact that it typically isn't briefed, or at least it wasn't briefed. The guy, dive guide launched a DSMB, and that was great. But um, not everybody knows how to do it and i think that should change patty is introducing uh has introduced dsmbs into the open water course which i think is great um dive guide not really paying that much attention dive guide should have been checking should have noticed the dive guide should have intervened when they were touching that turtle it's just it's not worth it like i get it you want to make tips so you don't want to chastise your divers but don't let them wreck your marine life man that's your livelihood you got to protect your reefs okay 
<sighs> Alright, well, I'm just gonna... There's a whole bunch of stuff in that video, but I'm just gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you vibe, subscribe, and if you like this video, go ahead and drop a like on it, because it really helps me out. Thanks for diving with me today. I'll see you in the water. Hi, right, puppy. You wanna see my dog? Come here. Alright. Oh, he's a good boy. He's a real good boy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's get out. Please.